Hello students! Welcome to Math and Magic. For this video, we are going to have an introduction of sequences. Also, we will talk about the formulation of general term for different sequences. By definition, a sequence is a succession of numbers in a specific order. Numbers in a given sequence are called terms. These terms are formulated according to some fixed rule or condition. They are arranged as the first term, that is the leftmost number, followed by the second term, the third term, fourth, and so on. A sequence with definite or countable number of terms is called finite sequence. Here, the first and last terms are both known or identified. As an example, we have this sequence of numbers 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Here, the first term is 5, the last term is 30, and the number of terms is 6. Another example of finite sequence, we have negative 1, positive 3, negative 9, positive 27, negative 81, positive 243, and negative 729. In this example, the leftmost number is negative 1, which indicates that it is the first term. The rightmost number, negative 729, is the last term. And for this sequence, we have 7 terms. In these two examples, the first and the last terms are referred to as extremes. Those are 5 and 30 in example 1 and negative 1, negative 729 in example number 2. Meanwhile, the terms between the first and the last terms are called means. Now aside from finite sequence, there is also a sequence with no definite number of terms. This is called infinite sequence. Commonly, these sequences are written with three dots known as ellipses, which symbolizes continuation up to positive or negative infinity. The following are examples of infinite sequence. Negative 11, negative 1, positive 9, 19, and so on and so forth. And then we also have this infinite sequence 512, 256, 128, 64, 32, and so on and so forth. Now, when asked to identify succeeding terms in a given sequence, we typically look for a pattern using the terms in a sequence. These patterns are known as the general term. It may appear as recursive or explicit. Now, to better understand how we formulate the general term, let's have this sequence. 1, 7, 13, 19, and so on. In this example, the first term is 1. We may represent this as a sub 1. Second term is 7, that's a sub 2. Third term is 13. Fourth term is 19. Here, we first need to get the differences between consecutive terms. 7 minus 1 is 6. 13 minus 7 is 6. 19 minus 13 is also 6. Now, if all the differences are the same, we will use the linear formula a sub n equals dn plus b, where a sub n is the indicated term, d is the common difference, n is the position of the term, and b, a constant. Say in this example, we will use 7, our second term, in the formula. It is a sub 2, or 7 equals 6 times 2 plus b. Now we need to solve for b to complete our general term. Multiplying 6 and 2, product is 12. Transpose positive 12 to the left side, it will become negative 12. 7 minus 12 is negative 5. 
Thus, B is equal to negative 5. Next, substitute the values of the common difference and B in our formula. It will become A sub N equals 6N minus 5. Now to check if this formula holds true in any of the given term, let's use the fourth term, 19. That is 19 equals 6 times 4 minus 5. Here, n is equal to 4 because that is the position of the indicated term 19. 6 times 4 is equal to 24. Then minus 5, the difference is positive 19. Hence, the general term a sub n equals 6n minus 5 is correct. Also, one importance of knowing how to construct the general term is that it makes the process of identifying n term easier. Let's say you are asked to find the 100th term of this sequence. With general term, you don't need to go to the rigorous process of listing the terms. Another example, find the general term and identify the 10th term of the sequence 10, 7, 4, 1, negative 2, and so on and so forth. Doing the previous procedure, get the differences between consecutive terms. 7 minus 10 is negative 3. 4 minus 7, the difference is negative 3. 1 minus 4 is also negative 3. Same with negative 2 minus 1. That is also equal to negative 3. Clearly, in this example, the common difference is negative 3. Next, select any term. For this item, let's use the first term 10. Using the formula a sub n equals dn plus b, substituting the given, that is 10 equals negative 3 times 1 plus b. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Transpose this value to the left side. It will become positive 3. Now 10 plus 3, the sum is 13. Thus, the value of b is positive 13. Constructing our general term, it is a sub n equals negative 3n plus 13. Now, to check if this condition holds true to all the terms, let's take negative 2. In the given, it is the fifth term. Substitute this in the formula. That is negative 2 equals negative 3 times 5 since that is the fifth term plus 13. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, plus 13 is negative 2. Hence, the general term a sub n equals negative 3n plus 13 in this sequence is correct. Third example, determine the general term of the sequence 1, negative 2, positive 4, negative 8, and so on and so forth. As you can see in the given, succeeding terms are determined by multiplying 2 to each preceding term. Thus, we will not get the differences between consecutive terms. Here, we will make 2 be the base of our general term. Next, another observation is that the signs alternate. The first term is positive, second is negative, third is positive again, and then the fourth is negative. Now, in such case, we need to multiply the base by negative. So, in this example, the base will now become negative 2. Next, we will raise this base by n plus b. Using the first term, which is 1, a sub n will now be equal to quantity negative 2 raised to n plus b. That will become 1 equals negative 2 raised to 1 plus b. Take note that to make the value on the right side of the equation equal to 1, you need to raise it by 0. So if n is equal to 1, b should be equal to negative 1. Thus, the initial general term for this sequence is a sub n equals negative 2 raised to n minus 1. Now to check if this is correct, Let's use, let's say, the fourth term, negative 8. Substituting this in the formula, 
negative 8 equals quantity negative 2 raised to 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. The cube of negative 2 is negative 8. Hence, the general term a sub n equals quantity negative 2 raised to n minus 1 is correct. Now, for our last example, determine the general term and find the seventh term of the sequence 6, 11, 18, 27, 38, and so on and so forth. Now, looking at the sequence, there is no multiplier used. So, we will follow the procedure similar to the first two examples and not the third. Here, we will get the common difference of consecutive terms. 11 minus 6 is 5. 18 minus 11 is 7. 27 minus 18 is equal to 9. And 38 minus 27 is equal to 11. Observe that for this example, the first differences are not the same. So we cannot use the formula a sub n equals dn plus b. Other formula may be applied for such case. Now what we will do is to get the second difference. 7 minus 5 is 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. 11 minus 9 is also equal to 2. Now as you can see, Second differences are now the same. What we will do is to form three equations. Using the three terms, let's say the terms 6, 11, and 18. Here we will use the formula a n squared plus b n plus c equals a sub n. For the first term 6, that is a times the square of 1 plus b times 1 plus c equals 6. We substitute 1 to n because it is the position of 6 in the sequence. It is the first. For the second term, 11, that is a times the square of 2 plus b times 2 plus c equals 11. The square of 2 is 4. Thus, here we have 4a plus 2b plus c equals 11. For the third term, 18, equation will be a times the square of 3 plus b times 3 plus c equals 18. The square of 3 is 9, thus the first term is 9a, then plus 3b plus c equals 18. Now given these three equations, we will solve for the values of a, b, and c. Here we may use Kramer's rule multiple elimination method, and others. Now, for this example, let's try to use multiple elimination. Here, we will subtract equation 1 from equation 2. That is 4a plus 2b plus c equals 11 minus a plus b plus c equals 6. Difference of 4a and a is 3a. 2b minus b is b. c will be cancelled out. And 11 minus 6 is equal to 5. Thus, the difference is 3a plus b equals 5. Now, we will rename this equation as equation number 4. For the second pair, we will subtract equation 2 from equation 3. Here, we need to eliminate variable c so that variables a and b will remain. 9a plus 3b plus c equals 18 minus 4a plus 2b plus c equals 11. 9a minus 4a is 5a. 3b minus 2b is simply b. c will be cancelled out. 18 minus 11 is equal to 7. Now rename this equation as equation number 5. Last, we will subtract equation 4 from equation 5. That is 5a plus b equals 7 minus 3a plus b equals 5. 5a minus 3a is 2a. Variable b will be cancelled out. On the right side, 7 minus 5 is equal to positive 2. Now, to solve for a, we will divide both sides by 2. a is now equal to positive 1. To solve for variable b, we may substitute the value of a 
to either equation 4 or 5. Here, I will use equation 4. 3a plus b is equal to 5. If a is equal to 1, that is 3 times 1 plus b equals 5. 3 times 1 is 3. Transposing this to the right side, it will become negative 3. 5 minus 3 is positive 2. Thus, b value is equal to 2. To solve for the last variable, which is c, let's use equation 1. a plus b plus c equals 6. If a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Now transpose this value to the right side, it will become negative 3. 6 minus 3 is equal to positive 3. Thus, c value is equal to 3. Last step would be substitute these values to the original formula. a n squared plus b n plus c equals a sub n. It will be n squared plus 2n plus 3 equals a sub n. This is now the general term of the sequence. To check if this is correct, let's use the fifth term 38. Is 38 equal to 5 squared plus 2 times 5 plus 3? 5 squared is 25. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Adding 25, 10, and 3, sum is equal to 38. Hence, the general term a sub n equals n squared plus 2n plus 3 is correct. Now solving for the 7th term, it will be a sub 7 equals 7 squared plus 2 times 7 plus 3. 7 squared is 49. 2 times 7 is 14. Adding 49, 14, and 3, the sum is equal to 66. Thus, the seventh term of the sequence, 6, 11, 18, 27, 38, and so on, is 66. Thank you for watching. God bless.